You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. Sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Well, welcome back to the Bunny Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, February 13th show. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint, one show at a time. And if you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. To talk with the guests that I have in studio or any questions that you have for me, please feel free to call into the show, 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And in studio right now, I have Kiyoki McCarthy. He's acting broker of Rural Living at Northwest Real Estate. And Kiyoki, thanks so much for coming in and uh, joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, Kiyoki is, again, acting broker of Real Living Northwest. He's been in the real estate industry for 15 years and designated broker for 10 years. He is the chair of the Northwest Multiple Listing Service Disciplinary Panel, uh, director of Washington Association of Realtors, and has been recognized as Brookfield Global uh, Rec- Relocation Award winner, and this is just one out of the U.S. And again, Kiyoki, is always a pleasure to uh, have you sit across from me. And I have a, a, a huge podcast of listeners in the real estate community, and we have all the experts that come in and, and share their advice for buyers and sellers. And I thought it would be great as the designated broker of the company for us to talk about how can we help our real, real, real estate brokers out there to be more successful in their business, because that's really what it's about. And this show is about making money so that you can have a better life for you and for your family. And being more successful in your career, that's the start of it. So you talk about establishing your identity and your why and your story. Can you explain what you what you mean about that and why that's so important for a real estate broker? Yeah, if you're a real estate agent uh, broker and you're trying to get your name out there, you're trying to build your business, you're trying to become successful, Mm -hmm. if you haven't started at the number one thing, everything you do from then on is not going to be done properly. And and what that is, is you've got to be able to share your story of why and who you are as a realtor. Mm -hmm. You need to explain what you believe in, what you stand for, and why someone is compelled to work work with you. And and it's different for everybody. And, And if you think about it, as a as a buyer or seller, there are literally endless choices of agents out there. Yes, uh, buyers and sellers there are inundated with the same boring messages. Hire me, I'll help you sell your house, and and. And if you're basically doing those same messages, you are not sticking out. Um, Along with your must do's, you need to remember to personalize it. It has to be about you truly. And there are many great exercises. Actually, one of the cool things, because this is coming out, we actually have a class that we're doing. Oh, that's um, right. That that would be a great way for a realtor to do this. And effectively, it's a... I'll be there. Yeah, you will be there. Huh? And uh, it would be a great class for someone to come. And uh, what it is, is it's developing what, what uh, we call a power pitch. Uh, a friend mm-hmm. of mine, Chris Bartell, is... Um, is has been in the in the branding industry for about 20 years and he just developed this program um, for realtors to be able to brand themselves and so you come to this class and by the end of the class you will have why someone should work with you you'll have a mm-hmm. whole elevator pitch actually he calls it a power pitch because like an that. elevator pitch yep. is old school yes and so uh keep it real nw.com is my uh website for agents to go to. So if, if you wanted more information on that class, go there. Yeah, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a great day. And as Kiyoki said, I mean, you want to stay away from the 3 Ps, price, product, and processes. Processes meaning service. And focus on your why and what makes you unique in how you're going to be able to help your buyers, sellers, or uh, your referral partners. So Kiyoki, let's go ahead and move on to the importance of designing a follow-up plan because the biggest thing that people drop the ball in any industry and especially in sales is the follow-up. So let's talk about that. So Tina, according to NAR, the National Association of Realtors, 25% of people end up using the same agent they used before. 
only 25%. That's it's just crazy. And it is crazy. And if you look at the average client satisfaction, it's not that only 25% of uh, clients are happy at the yes. end of a transaction. It's that the one simple rule of sales is follow up and yes. and we don't as an industry we're terrible at it and uh you've got to develop a client follow up system that has at least 7 years of mm -hmm. of touches of content of of uh whether it's telling you to make a phone call or a visit mm -hmm. or do you have uh, events for your clients, whatever it is that gets you in front of your client over the next seven years. And the thing is, you can't just create it on the fly per customer. You've got to design the system. Yes. You're the queen of one timing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to one time mm -hmm. this system. You yes. need to create a follow up system and then hit play at the end of a transaction and have that transaction go all the way through until they're ready to do yeah. another transaction. I say, uh, you know, if it's why go out and chase new business, work with the business that you've already established and that you've worked so hard to get and just take care of them. And the biggest, biggest thing right now, I love technology because nobody's taking advantage of the personal touch. Pick up the phone. Nobody else is doing it. Right. So it's just uh, have all that other stuff, the email, automated emails and all that cool stuff and the social media stuff. But don't forget to pick up the phone. So let's talk about uh, suggestions that you have on uh, about a buyer and seller presentation. Yeah. So that's another one. I'll, I'll tell you, I'm shocked at how many agents when the phone rings and someone uh -huh. says, hey, I'm thinking about selling my home the agent goes into a panic. Okay, I've got to create something to go meet with this seller and yeah. convince them to use me. Yeah. And that that's it's too late. If you've received the phone call, you are so far behind at that point. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a plan in place again of how you give a presentation and you've got to mm -hmm. practice that presentation. Yep. And there's a lot of ways you can do presentations these days. Are you going to, you know, I know in my company we have a paperless system. So uh, the presentation is delivered ahead of time to the nice. age, uh, to the client. They know what you're going to talk about when you get there. You go through that presentation. You can either do a, you know, you could give them an iPad. I mean, there's so many ways. You can still do old school print paper. Yeah. I mean, people still like to touch and feel, mm -hmm. but you've got to plan you gotta embrace ahead. your uniqueness in the way you you present yes yeah and asking specific questions on exactly you know what because everybody has a or, or you're going to put them into um the presentation adjust the presentation based on what their needs are so really finding out what's important to them and i always say at the end of a presentation it's always time to sell your unique proposition and that's again your why and really your your close and leaving with a call to action kiyoki last time before i've got to uh, wrap up our show here once a real estate broker has a listing how do they manage and advertise that listing to make sure that they have the best success for their seller? Right. Now you've got the listing. You have two main goals. Uh -huh. The first is to get that listing in front of as many eyes as possible. Uh -huh. You know, you've got to show it in the best light. You better have had professional photos and all of that to, to get it out there. But, but secondly, you need to show your seller because your seller sometimes doesn't see what's happening behind the scenes. Uh. And there are so many ways. So I know in my company, what we do is we have a seller insight report where everything we do, all the marketing material, all the phone calls we take, everything we do gets added to this website and the seller can see it at any given point. And that is so important because if your house doesn't sell right away, your seller is going to want to know what you're doing and you better be able to prove to them that you're taking care of them. Makes total sense. Kiyoki, thank you so much for spending time with me. I, Absolutely. I would have liked to see your lovely bride as well, but with those uh, two special cherubs that she calls them, um, she couldn't come in. Yeah, next time. Yeah, next time. Kiyoki, thank you so much. You bet. Coming up next in the Money Hour, so we're going to wrap up the show. I actually have another guest. It's been such a great day already. Um, we're going to talk more about real estate for buyers and sellers that are out there. I have John Fakur with John L. Scott Ording coming up next right after this break on 1150 AM KKNW.